Ladies and gentlemen, Space Reg here, working on my 2000 Jeep Cherokee. Today we're working on brake shoes. Uh, it's been a long time since I looked at mine, uh, and I thought it was about time to, to get in there. Full disclosure, I actually started this job yesterday and started recording on the other side, but I was actually pretty sick. I was making no sense and rambling, far worse than normal. Uh, I decided to just abandon all that. Uh, I'll finish that side off camera. And I'll show you guys what to do on this side, step by step, with as little pissing around as I can, because that's all that was happening over there. For the most part, this is kind of all you're going to need. You just want a you know, good, good pair of needle nose pliers. This is about the bare minimum. You want a good tough pair. One of these spring tools here. I never used one before this job, but this is actually turning out to be kind of handy, and I'll, I'll show you how. A couple other odds and ends. You, of course, need the old trusty BFH. Right here we got uh, some pseudo OEM quality brake shoes. Uh, these look plenty good enough. I picked, I picked these up at the old Napa. I also picked up uh, a full spring kit. You you want to get one of these when you do your brake shoes. That you know all the heat and, and temperature variations that are exerted on these things causes them to lose their elasticity and their uh, you know their strength over time, and they they can wear out. And fail, and then you're gonna have a brake shoe that's brake shoe that drags, and that's no good. So obviously, get your uh, your vehicle up on some axle stands. You always want to do one one side at a time, so that you can go back to the other side and reference it, because it can get pretty confusing, no matter how smart you are, as to which way a spring sits. And you can actually get them together wrong, and sometimes they'll work. But you want to get it together the right way. Flat springs. The flatter, the better. Earlier on, I already sprayed a little bit of penetrating oil just around this lip here. Uh, this is this the friction uh, between your drum and this hub here are what holds it on. And if you're lucky you can pull it off, but if you live in Canada like me, this is where you need this. Just like that. Now you see all this dust here, this is really bad for you. Uh, you should be wearing a mask if you can, because oftentimes there's asbestos and other particulate that's in this dust that's really, really bad for you. So hold your breath. <gasps> this is harder than it looks one handed, you know. Okay, once you got your drum off, it's a good idea to just have a look inside it. See, uh, make sure there's no deep score. Uh, feel the edge. There shouldn't be a huge difference between this edge here and in here. If there is, then you're probably worn out too far and you might want to consider finding some replacements. Uh, you could probably get a good set from the junkyard, honestly, but, you know, that's up to you and your wallet. Now, I'm actually surprised. At least two years, possibly three years ago, I checked them, and I swear to God there was just as much meat left on these. I could probably get away with keeping these on here. But they're clearly very old, and after many Canadian winters, these springs are looking a little rough. Yeah, it's terrible. Before you do anything else, just take your favorite brake cleaner and give this thing a bath. Uh, it'll help uh, clean off the parts so when you're playing with them you're making less of a mess. And any of this dust that's left on here, it, it'll stick to it and wash it down onto the ground, hopefully it'll be less airborne. Also, put a tray underneath if you want. Okay, now, your order of operations for disassembly and reassembly for this might be a little different from mine. If, if you know better, I don't know why you're watching this video anyway. Chances are, if you're watching this, you don't have a clue where to start anyway, so uh, do your best to follow along. I'll do my best to explain what I'm doing and try to show all the little nitty-gritty things that are happening here as we go. I, I, I want to say these are easy calipers to change, but they're really not. They're not rocket science and they're not terribly difficult, but there's a couple of things you got to fiddle around with and watch out for as you go. Now where I started was I take off these springs first at the top here. And to do that, they're just hooked over this little peg that sticks out here, this pin. That's where this tool here comes in real handy. It's got this end on here. It's, like, it's cupped and it's got a little tab sticking out. This thing is just slick. I've done so many brake calipers. Well, it's been a while. And I, ne I never used one of these. This is nice. So what you do is you just take this little tab here, you stick it in the open end of your spring, put this guy over that, that pin there, 
you give it a turn until that tab is under your spring there, see? So once you got it, just give it a pull. So it's entirely possible to get these springs off using needle nose pliers and screwdrivers, but there's a high likelihood you're going to end up sticking the tip of this into the mushy part of your hand somewhere, or worse. So just pick up the spring tool. You know, I, I can't believe I lived without one of these for so long. These springs have a lot of tension on them, so don't be surprised if they're hard to get off. If you can get the springs out, get them out of the way. This one's, this one's not really cooperating with me. Before you go too much further, just go ahead, pull this out of the way, and uh, depending on if you're on the driver's side or passenger's side, it's going to vary, but you'll, you'll quickly see if you turn this little dial, you can retract the shoes. That may even make these springs easier to take off. Uh, oops. Sorry. <laughs> They're still a bitch to get off, trust me. You just keep turning that until you can't turn it anymore and the brakes have come in. So once this is backed off completely, that takes a little bit of tension off of this, this unit right here. I find the easiest way to get that off is to take uh, just a flathead screwdriver. The spring here wraps around here and kind of hooks down so you kind of just gotta get that guy under there like that give it a lift look at that easy as can be so there that's out of the way so this will flop around see so that that's loose there and that cable connects to this little loop here Now that that's off, you can uh, you can you can fiddle fuck around, get those off. Uh, what you have to do is get it so that it slides into there. That's it. The next thing we got to get off are these uh, retaining springs. There's a there's pins that go from the from the back. You can actually feel them if there isn't too much crud on there. They go all the way from the the back of this drum to the front here. So what you gotta do is compress this this whole spring here and then turn this pin 90 degrees and it pops through. I believe they make uh, an actual tool that does this. I d if, if that fancy spring tool of mine does it, it doesn't, I can't figure it out. As you can see the back here, it actually pushes that pin out, see? Sometimes the hard part is that pin is in there, it's been in there so long, it's actually rusted, stuck in there, and it takes a little bit of force to make it pop loose. Take a, a nut driver, and you want one with a, a big enough size that it's going to, you know, you know, sit in there okay, and that pin can, can spin freely in there. Look at that. We got it. So yeah, all I did was I pushed it in and uh, I pushed on that pin a little bit when it popped out until it broke free and then I could spin it. The spring actually is broken because you can see it left behind a little piece of itself. Uh, over time these things, they, they just sure weaken. This side, same thing. See, and if you're having trouble turning the pin at the back, you can always give this a guy a turn. Yeah, stuck. <laughs> now that you got all the springs off, the retainer springs, these goofy things, you got that little cable system out of the way here. All you gotta do is grab onto these grubby suckers like this, and from the top, spread them apart. Look at that. Now the bottom's gonna stay attached because there's a spring on it, but all you gotta do is just get her out of the way there. Now the other thing that's gonna stop you is well there you go this is for your parking brake and that just sits inside this little this little hole here and it, it like like you saw it it doesn't take much to come off okay now that that's out of the way have a look at your cylinder you know make sure this boot looks okay there's no cracks in it mine looks okay it's definitely old but it's not cracking it's not dry it's still nice and rubbery that's gonna stay put. You might want to also take like a 
wire brush or some compressed air to, to blow out some of this loose rust and debris. You don't, you don't need that sticking inside your brakes. If you're using compressed air, make sure you wear a mask because again, that dust is not good for you. In case you didn't notice, there was this piece was also in between the uh, brake shoes. And so, yeah, just put that aside. Don't lose track of that. It's at this point that I'll, I'll just take my old shoes and I'll lay them out beside my new stuff. Make sure I've got them oriented correctly. There's a pin on uh, two of your shoes, one for each side, so make sure you get the right one. Uh, as you can see, here's that pin on the new one. The other side doesn't have one. So don't get them mixed up, because that won't work. Much to my dismay, this so-called complete spring kit doesn't come with every spring, which kind of choked me a little bit. As a, a much wiser man than me once said, you gotta piss with the cock you got. We're gonna make do with uh, what we got here. The problem with these spring kits, if you're not familiar with them, sometimes they throw in extra little giblets that you don't necessarily need for yours. So this spring kit probably covers two or three different styles of, of shoes. I've seen online there are complete kits that will replace these pieces as well. Uh, mine are okay. They seem to go together okay on the other side, so we're going to reuse what we have to and replace what we can. Get this fucking spring off. Ah. You need this little pulley here if you didn't get a new one. Yours might be stuck on there pretty good. A pair of pliers will pull it out. It's got a little a uh, little lip here that fits right in that hole. Remember that for later. I gotta reuse this spring because I didn't get one with that bullshit spring kit I got. You could just work it off that little shaft there. Well, that's what we're using. Uh, next, just get this guy out of the way. This isn't a terribly strong spring, so you can get this off by hand. All that leaves us with is this guy. I want this adjuster off of here. And for whatever reason, the other side did this too. It's damn near rust welded itself on there. Just give it a little... Give it a little abuse and she should come off. Make sure that these things still spin freely. If you get your driver's side and passenger side confused somehow, this is your driver's side. It's a reverse thread. The passenger side's going to be a conventional, you know, clockwise thread. Don't mix them up. Do one at a time. Jeez. Now, now the other thing I like to do with these adjusters is take them apart. And if yours is in pretty good shape, this is actually not bad. Get yourself some high temperature anti-seize or silicone grease, that sort of thing. Uh, I like to use this stuff for these. I feel like it lasts longer. It holds up a little better. This end, it, you don't need a lot, just enough to get a little coat on there. And then, same thing with this side. Completely unthread this guy. Same thing with the, oh, fucking magnetic dust. That's the worst. You don't need a lot of this crap. It's far better to have a very thin coating of this all over the place than a big blob of it in one spot. When, when threads line up, they don't always touch. They have a bit of a space, one side or the other, and it might not necessarily get the grease in there, or, or in this case, anti-seize. And if it doesn't, you're going to get corrosion in that spot which is exactly what you don't want. So just use the brush to push it into all the threads. This stuff is worth its weight in gold. Well, it's worth its weight in Canadian tire money. A bottle like this will last you two lifetimes, so don't be afraid to spend a bit of dough on it. Just thread it back in all the way. Now you're gonna to wanna to take your favorite high temperature lubricant or uh, silicone based lubricant and just apply a really small amount to these six points. Your brake shoes actually ride against those, so these will give it a little bit of lubrication. Uh, you want to make sure you use something high temperature because the heat from the brakes can cause other greases to melt, and then you might get them on the shoes, and then they're not going to work. Now you're going to take this adjustment dealy here, slot it onto the shoes, just like the old one was, like that. We're going to take our new spring here, and just go 
Okay, you connect it from here to here. The spring is, it doesn't have a lot of tension and it doesn't have to go very far, so it's pretty easy to put on by hand. All right, back up here, we've got this guy, a new spring for it. Uh, if yours is a goofy one like mine, it's got, uh, one end is tapered. Put the tapered end on it like that. If you put it on this way, it doesn't work. And uh, this little metal dealy here, I just have that pointed down. It seems to be fine. Doesn't interfere with anything. That just sits right there. Now, and remember that our friend here, spread these, sort of get them on there. There's a tab on this guy that's got to line up with that hole there, so. There we go. Now, both of these together have to squeeze into this little slot in this guy. So, just do that. Make sure the tops are behind back here. Now, because this spring is so new, it's not going to let you squeeze that onto there. So just keep that in mind. You can, you can let it sit loose like that for now. We'll deal with it later, but just, you know, don't forget that's not quite on there. Now we're going to put in our new retaining springs. These, uh, these just pop on there. These ones actually kind of sit in there snug enough it holds them. Now this pin's going to go in from the back. I'm going to go in, and it's going to turn, and that's what's going to hold it in. Just get it over that hole, and take your nut driver, push it on all the way, push the pin in from the back, and then turn it. And that's it. Do the same on the other side. Double check that your pins are exactly 90 degrees to those slots. Ooh. That was a little off. There we go. Perfect. All right, and as you can see, now that I've got support of the the support from these, uh, you can get that guy fed in there where it belongs. Okay, now I'm gonna put this crappy old spring back on since it's all I got. It just slips over this pin. Uh, just because it's easier to see outside of it, when this is in there, uh, this guy is actually gonna hook over it like this. See? That's the back. So, not like this, or anything else, like that. You want to get this spring back over this guy. Your old screwdriver. It's got to sit in that hole right there. Now, there's nothing holding that in. It's going to fall out if you're not careful. Look at that, for fuck's sakes. Take your spring and you loop it around there. Stick that guy through there. You with me? Okay. You just reach down here, push that up, and that's it. Make sure that's still seated. See how this wire goes over? It goes in front of those tabs and then over this. Don't get that mixed up. Get that just like that. Here's the dick around with this. This guy just wants to fucking pop out of that hole. But this thing has to be behind the spring. The only thing holding that in place is when the spring is in there. It's fucking bullshit. Fuck you, Wagner Bendix. This is a fucking fuck around. Okay, now nobody breathe, because that is exactly where it's supposed to be, and if anybody looks at it funny, it's going to fall out. On your handy-dandy fancy tool here, you take this goofy-looking end, and I was pretty skeptical of this, but this actually kind of works. Put it through the spring, you put the end of that right on there, and then you pull this sucker.
Ugh. Now when you do this, fully expect that to pop out. Uh, I actually got really lucky on this side. It took me so many tries on the other one before I was able to get this spring on without that flying off and sitting all cockeyed. And you'll know something's wrong because this adjuster here won't have enough tension on it and it won't lock into the teeth of this, this little gear here. And this cable will seem all loose because this thing is just not seated properly. So you have to you kind of have to mess around with it until you get that in there. But if you get it like this, that's all you want. Same thing here, but a lot easier because you don't have any of this other stuff to deal with. All right, that's basically it for springs. Now I just like to give these guys a little whack, make sure they're seated, make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Now the last thing you gotta do before you're completely finished is uh, use this adjuster to get your brake shoes out as close to the drum as you can get them without them touching. I just get them to come out a little bit and then I'll put the drum on, test fit it, and see. And I do it until I can feel it dragging slightly and then I take the drum off, back it off a little bit, and that's it. There is a little adjustment site in the back here with a rubber plug in it you can use and do it with the drum on, but I find this works fine and these will adjust themselves with a little bit of driving. You just gotta go backwards and hit the brakes you know, slowly, but hit the brakes firmly a couple times and the, these guys will, will straighten themselves out. You don't want it to be way out of adjustment when you're doing that or, or they'll struggle to, to try and make up for it. Just give them a hand, get it close, and, the, and that should be fine. Thanks a lot for watching. Sorry it's such a long video. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. There's a lot of steps involved with this as you saw. So uh, good luck with yours. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and someone smarter will answer. Have a nice day.